Today I'm sitting with notable fashion stylist Zarina Akers, also founder of Black Owned Everything. Zarina, welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I know in the midst of this pandemic, it's been a whirlwind just with everything going on. Yeah, crazy <laughs> so, times. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so today I want to focus on your latest venture, Black Owned Everything. Can you tell us a little bit about it? What is Black Owned Everything? <laughs> Black Owned Everything is, you know, it started off as an Instagram page out of the movement, a place. I wanted to really create a positive place for us where we could be celebrated, where we could be highlighted, where we could be featured, um, you know, instead of, you know, in the midst of everything going on. So now I'm, I'm kind of choosing to evolve it and expand it into a larger platform. So we're looking to launch a marketplace really soon so i've been literally pouring everything i have into it and you know to kind of bring it to market so i'm excited to share it so walk me through the day when you decided to stamp black on everything like how were you feeling where were you how did it just come to life well i initially started as a fit step so i had it for a few days i was just i wanted to follow all the amazing brands that were being shared and eventually I found so many phenomenal things across so many categories that I decided to post it. And I asked, the funny thing is I asked a friend of mine, okay, do you think I should post it? And she was like, no, you know, a lot of people are starting things that, that they're not going to keep up with. You don't want to start something that you won't keep up with. And I, and I was like, well, I'm not going to not start something just because maybe I won't keep up with it either. So, so I, I posted it on my main page. Hey, I started this page. I, you know, can you just send me the brands that your favorite black-owned brands for us to follow? And that turned into us having ten thousand followers in three days, wow. twenty thousand in a week, and it just grew from there. It's honestly swarming. It, like you're almost at two hundred thousand followers now. It's kind of crazy. It's only been four months, and it's been all organic. So that's the really cool thing about the, the really cool thing about it is it's been you know, our community sharing their favorite brands, sharing their friends, their family, their mom, you know, like the companies that they've created out of the pandemic. And this, there's been this organic growth, you know, like that, which is really cool. Was this something that you ever thought you would be creating or something you would ever be a part of? No, you know, the funny thing is, even with Instagram, you know, I wasn't, even at the time I started the page, I wasn't consistent even posting on my own page because it's just like, yeah, like, you gotta maybe hit a little face tune every now and then. <laughs> and it's just like a lot. But when I when I did this, suddenly there was this responsibility and this joy and, and curating it and making it beautiful and wanting to represent our people and our creators in the best light possible. So suddenly it became fun and it became something I was kind of obsessed with every day to contribute to, to be consistent with. So yeah. And was it like the feedback from the followers that really kind of gave you the momentum to keep it going? Definitely, because then again, that it became this responsibility. People were looking to it. So how do we, how do we keep that going? How do we keep sort of quenching the thirst of right. the community? Um, but no, to answer your question, it was not something that I really saw for myself. I think if I thought that it would gain that much traction, I probably would have <laughs> kind of you know backed away from it. But but it's I mean. We're here Divine and it's purpose. exciting yeah. and I've never been happier to wake up and work on something. That's awesome. It's like your new baby. Yeah, it's my baby. It's your baby. <laughs> um, so what inspires you? Like, how do you find the rhythm to like execute your visions? You know, I think sometimes we, we create out of necessity uh, and other times we create for the sake of creating, right? So I try to find a balance, with, you know, between the two, you know, when you're working um, I like to kind of still kind of tap back into that that girl that was in high school sewing jeans together and you know creating and painting on clothes. Um, so I'm constantly, I mean, I'm constantly looking at things. I'd say you know I'm really inspired by the timeline on Black on Everything and and the way people are really pushing their creative limits forward and really wanting to expand their products and and um, you know really push the vision. So as a black woman today, in today's age, um, what empowers you? What empowers me as a black woman today? Um, you know, I feel like we can really do anything. You know, I, you know, often society tries to put these limitations on us. Um, 
but it's really up to us now to accept it. And we have so much at our fingertips. I believe that, you know, I believe that we really can do anything. And, I, and as I look through many of the brands that we feature, there are so many black female owned, you know, businesses and, and these female entrepreneurs that, that are really making a way, you know, and grabbing life by the horns and doing what they want to do. Um, so, you know, what empowers me as a woman is just being that, that power. I, I feel like I came from, you know, my bloodline must tra trace to the Dagome Kingdom where the, the women were warriors, you know, and they, you know, but- you Just tap into when, your inner warrior. But like, no, it's just, it's, just, it's a certain way of carrying, you know, a life force and not conforming to societal norms and expectations of you as a woman. You know, did was your mom and your grandmother an inspiration to you? Like, yeah, my I was raised with my grandmother and my aunt, yeah, and okay. um, and many of all my aunts and everyone in my family, honestly, most women in my, my family were were single women and were you know really leading the charge. So as a child, I didn't really look to this Cinderella Cinderella narrative of like you know this fairy tale knight in shining armor. I kind of was like, oh maybe y'all. Yeah, but it's single mom, but never thinking of it as that. But like, oh, you'll have your child, you'll you'll be a, you know, you'll but have your career hard. and do what you want to do and explore life, you know, the way you want to explore it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you have this thing where you can like simply take a brand and 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 bring it to light and it transforms. I don't know. It's like the Z effect or something. Um, I like to call it like. Where do you like? How does it feel to be able to provide light to brands that are that are like underdogs or brands that don't necessarily have the platform or necessarily a voice or um, you know to be able to shine? Uh, it's exciting to to really be able to do that to be able to utilize the platforms that I have access to, but what really is joyful is seeing potential, and I think when I realize okay, maybe not everyone sees things the way I see it. Mm -hmm. So I could look at a page and maybe maybe the postings are a bit shabby, but there's that one image, you know, or that one item that really could translate and taking that item and featuring it, you know, and then putting it next to something else that complements it, just shifts the, your perspective, right. you know, of the product. Um, but, you know, even from a styling perspective, to be able to at least, like, like collaborating with designers, my favorite, pulling them and pushing them to their limits um, and what they're creating and, and just sometimes it's just very simple edits, very simple details that can really elevate, you know, what they're doing. Yeah. Does it give you joy to make you feel like you're like helping them excel? It's exciting to yeah. see. It's been, it's been even like in something as simple as sharing posts on the, on Black on Everything's Instagram and getting these DMs back, like this is from the brand saying, this has changed my, the trajectory of what I thought my company even could be. Wow. Um, and these are brands maybe I've been watching for like a year, but never really considered the power of outwardly sharing them. Outwardly, yeah. And something as simple as that, this kind of community of sharing, the same way people share the brands with us, sharing them with everyone, everyone else, um, you know, it's really kind of propelled some of these brands forward. I think as, as stylists sometimes, you know, when you find a gem, you want to keep it to yourself. You find a good brand, you want to keep it to Honey, yourself. Honey, you want to. Yeah. yeah, you want to. But I think you, back here, yeah, you know? but you've definitely redefined what it means to, like, share, you know, and, and, and be able to let people know, like, oh, you can have access to this, too, and it's okay. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And because then all of a sudden, these brands are on, on covers of magazines and, and things like that, mm -hmm. and then they're garnering sales, and then they can create more product, and then there's more, there's enough for everyone. There's more, you know? yeah. Do you think that Black-owned everything can increase the economic uh, growth within Black communities? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I think it, I think it definitely has, uh, even in a small way, to, to kind of, you know, give visibility and to highlight these brands. Um, you know, and not in, in a very inclusive space, you know, because there are shoppers and consumers of all colors that are there supporting the page to discover um, of all races, rather, that are there shopping, you know, and exploring and just discovering new brands. So I think um, it's definitely, it's definitely starting to make its mark. What made you decide to um, open Black Owned Everything to all categories versus just fashion, since fashion is your background? Uh, when I started the page, it, you know, 
the amount of brands that I was seeing through the movement of everyone sharing their lists of the beauty brands and the home brands, it just was phenomenal um, and, and quite mind-blowing in a way that all of these things, practically everything in your house can be black a black, black owned business, you know, be from a, a, a black entrepreneur and creator. Um, and just the concept of that and wanting to highlight our people and how multifaceted we really are um, was the inspiration for that. I mean, this fashion is like great. We, I've been working with black designers and trying to highlight and give visibility, visibility to black designers for a while, but in that space of like, I enjoy decorating my home, I mm -hmm. enjoy pillows, and I paint my walls, and you know, and really pushing forward that narrative that that we we can do everything, we can do anything. When I saw the page posted like a black vehicle, Mims Motors, Mims Motors, I was appalled. I, out of Detroit, that, how do we not know? How do we not know this? How do we not know this? Yeah, yeah. I, that was the, the man, biggest shock really, for me. He's like really doing a great job too, mm -hmm. um, and he has an awesome fleet. I mean, technology that that rivals Tesla. You wow. Know, when you look at the future in the cars, yeah. You know? So it's just about bringing more awareness to it so that it can become exactly. more Exactly. You want to just highlight, you know, shine the light on them. Just talk about it, you yeah. know. Post it. You come back to it. Revisit it. Revisit it. Revisit how they evolved, you know, and continue to support new launches and you know it's it's you know it's so great. so how do you pick which brand gets featured on the page or on the platform with the website that's launching very soon um, are there deciding factors that go into that yeah I mean well on the on the Instagram page I really want to make sure that brands are ready to receive um, so I, I like to make sure that their product that they have a product that people can purchase um, you know, I do. I will sort of scale more into services and, and creatives in general, but so people can, you know, if they want to kind of, at the time, especially when the, the page was birth, it's like sort of put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. Do you have your website up? You know, are your, honestly, sometimes it does your, your picture fit in the grid that we're curating at the moment. It's something as simple as that. But you know, scaling now to the marketplace and to the e-commerce platform, um, in this beta test model, I wanted people that and brands that were that are developed, that are you know ready to deliver, that have inventory, and as we test out this thing, because I want when consumers come to the site that they are, you know, they can start to trust the brand, yeah. you know. And I've seen that brands are selling out whenever Black Owned Everything posts them. Like, it's literally bringing so much traffic to their businesses. So I guess for future brands, make sure you have your, your product in stock. Yeah. <laughs> you Pretty much. <laughs> because the fact that people don't always know what we're going to post. Yeah. Too. So you it's know? like you got to stay ready. Yeah. You kind of got to. And it's just like you pop up and it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Sometimes. <laughs> It comes out of nowhere, but we're trying. We're trying. Yeah. Um, so the world finally seems to be listening and to be highlighting um, black voices and black spaces. So, and I think black owned everything um, is definitely a pioneer in that happening in the midst of like racial injustice and everything else going on. So do you feel like this is something that will continue to um, have momentum or do you think that it'll lose it at some point in terms of just like, I think it, it Black definitely. Is being a thing. I think it definitely can lose momentum if we let it. If we let it. If yeah. we let it, and I think it's up to us to continue to push the narrative and to continue to share and tell our stories. And you know, on our, our sort of tagline we've been using is for when the trend is over. So I feel like we're kind of coming to market at a time when the momentum does appear to be slowing down. You know, but I want us to be here as a resource, not only for consumers and creators, but also for corporations. We can partner to bring brands onto these larger platforms as well. But to, you know, but I, I, want, I want us to be around when the dust clears. You know, I want us to still be standing and to still be growing uh, when the trend is over. What's your overall vision for Black Owned Everything? What can we expect it to turn into within the next well, months, well, couple on this, of years. On this space, um, for sure, I want to phase into more uh, original content. I wanna, I wanna 
involve and incorporate more storytelling. I want to develop more social media series and really organic, um, informational, educational, fun uh, content. You know that we can 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 kind of come and create and celebrate. You know, I think it could be a really dynamic space. Yeah. yeah. For it to be such a resourceful platform, what do you hope that visitors or your audience can take away from it? Um, to, you know, I would say, you know, something that the audience can take away from it is the inspiration to um, and motivation to diversify their spending, you know, and to take a, I, what we're trying to do is make the, the kind of the concept of the one-stop shop and implement that a, a little bit and make it more easy and fluid in the discovery process. You to know? also recycle the di black dollar. To recycle the black dollar, but also, you know, outside of the black dollar too, you know, when you want to come and diversify your spending, mm -hmm. you know where to go. You know where to go. Yeah. Because it starts with us, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, where we spend our money within our community can influence other people to do Yeah, we can keep it in our community a little longer. A little longer. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, um, with this new venture being a part of your legacy, is there a certain weight or pressure that you feel to just like deliver or to keep going? Like, I'm sure it's a lot. Girl, it's okay. Heavy. Um, yeah, you know, there's been many lessons that I've learned so far, like one of which being to, you know, that everything can be perfect mm -hmm. and that you have to just kind of get something out and let it be a very simple thing, you know, and let it grow and let it evolve and learn from it. Uh, but yeah, there's been there's been tons of pressure, but you know, in the end, it really is exciting to do and to and I think it could be a really great pet platform for our community. So it's all worth it, for sure. As an audience, how can we support Black on Everything More? Stay engaged. You know, come check us out. You know, go visit the site. Read what we're talking about. We have a lot of new content coming. We want to like really feed our audience um, in a very valuable way, not just sort of what to come and spend your money on, but you know what to come and really consume and feed your 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 you know learn about finance and education, how to sustain your business, how to build a business, how to grow and and really um, you know create fluidly. So yeah, just to come and stay engaged with us and stay tuned, you know, visit the website, visit the Instagram, and yeah. comment, like, share, you know, spread the word. It's simple. It's simple. Yeah. What advice would you give your younger self? My younger self? Um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Like, I, I, I was young, I was always quite focused on wanting to be something and mm -hmm. wanting to not maybe go to the neighborhood school, but to push myself to go to a different school or push myself to, to leave home and go to school out of state. But, you know, I don't have any regrets. And I think that, um, I mean, I, she all right, you she know? She all right. Yeah, she's she's, she's going to be good. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have she, any, she's the one that got me here. She's the one that got you me know? here, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> For um, those who are like, obviously inspired by you and who aspire to, you know, be a stylist or have their own business, you know, that's growing to be as big as Black on Everything one day. Do you have anything that you would tell them or any, you know, advice that you would share? Um, you know, I would say really take a beat to learn what it is that you're trying to do. Uh, I, I find that a lot of younger people really want to kind of rush into the next thing or, you know, with the instant gratification of social media um, and the very short attention span that we've developed because of it. Um, you know, people see something and they see a person and they're wearing fancy clothes and, and their makeup is perfect or appears to be. I would say um, continue to do your research and make sure that you're learning from your mistakes. Okay. You know, and you're really taking those things and implementing them in a positive way, you know, as you take those next steps. You exude so much just confidence and assurance. So I want to know, what do you think your superpower is? Um, whatever it is that protects me <laughs> when I walk into the world, yeah. you know, I think that's that's my superpower. Sort of knowing and trusting that that thing, you mm -hmm. know, that that voice, um, whatever it is, like whether it be 
go left today instead of right. You know, mm -hmm. it's very a simple thing you of just uh, trusting right. yourself okay. is kind of trusting, kind of like trusting God trusting in God. a way. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. For being here. Thanks for having this me. This is great. Love Short and doing. sweet. Straight to the point. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to see what's to come for Black Owned Everything. I just want to say congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm inspired to see how it's just developed into something. Uh, it took on a life of its own, honestly, in such a short time. It did. In a time where a lot of us were lost. We didn't really know what was happening next, especially you know, uh, within fashion, you know, or as a stylist or just a creative. And I think Black Owned Everything gave us all a new sense of inspiration, a new sense of hope, and something to look forward to, and something to continue to learn about. That's a big cry. No, Thank seriously. You. So I just want to say um, I'm proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank and you so much. Um, I'm so happy to be a part of this journey just by even sitting and talking with you and seeing where it goes. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. No? <laughs> 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 hey guys, hope you enjoyed that episode. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. There's so much more coming, so make sure you stay tuned for more Dive Into Details.